Hey everyone, 2023 is finally here and we thought we'd kick things off with kind of the best build you can physically do right now. Money, no object. And this is what we came up with. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Hello mate, you all right? Yeah, just got all the bits from my banging new gaming PC. Just got to put it together. It's going to be so much better than yours. Oh, right. What did you get then? The latest Intel 12th gen processor, a feature packed motherboard and 32 gig of DDR4 memory. See, miles ahead of yours. <laughs> you, you realize that board needs DDR5 memory, don't you? Don't tell me you went and bought the wrong stuff. DDR4 is so 2014. I can't believe you was that stupid. <gasps> what? No, you're joking. What should I get then? For me, I'd be looking at Corsair's newest Vengeance DDR5 kits, or if you're wanting that all important RGB, then go for the Dominator Platinum RGB. Oh, you are a lifesaver, thanks. But where can I find out more? By clicking the link in the description below, of course. <laughs> and you call me the stupid one. Okay, so this is the build, or at least all of the parts of the build. So we thought we'd do something kind of super special. So we have got a lot of stuff here from Thermaltake, including their latest 360 mil AIO. We have got some RGB fans because RGB makes everything better. E-Technics PC maintenance toolkit, 1350 watt power supply with a native PCI Express Gen 5 connector on there. So no worries about any little adapters. Riser cable, 16 terabytes worth of storage. We've got the i9, 13900K. And then we've got some of the fastest memory you can get right now. This is the G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB 6800 megahertz, as well as the MSI Z690 Godlike motherboard, RTX 4090 Supreme X, and the latest case from Thermaltake, which is the Thermaltake Series 500, which actually has this really cool LCD panel as well. So what we're gonna do is build the system step by step, show you guys exactly what's going on, and then show you exactly how it performs in a spattering of games. So yeah, let's get on with it. Okay, so starting with the motherboard, this is the MSI MEG Z690 Godlike. It is unlike anything else out there on the market. Now, if you've seen any of my videos in the past, you will know that I try to basically build as much as I physically can on the board itself before we put it inside the case. So with this board, it can take up to six M.2 drives. We haven't got six, we've only got four, but they are four terabyte drives from Sabrent. So we're gonna take this off and then see exactly where the slots are. And then we can look at putting in our four, four terabyte Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus drives. So these currently are, I guess, the fastest drives on the market. Gen 5 is coming. There are motherboards that obviously support Gen 5, like this one, not on all of the slots, but uh, I believe it's only on one of them, but still, at the moment, for what you can buy, Gen 4 is the fastest. So with all the panels removed, it now gives us our kind of view of exactly how many M.2 drives we can put in. Obviously, we're going to put in four, so let's start here, put that one in. And this, this particular board actually does have a sort of locking mechanism so that uh, you don't need to screw anything down, it just locks into place. Now we do get the choice because we are using all sort of matching drives as to whether we want to potentially put these in RAID or whether we just want to have, you know, four independent drives. So processor wise, we are going with the i9-13900K, which does give us eight performance cores as well as 16 efficiency cores, as well as a uh, hyper threading as well. So we could obviously have used uh, Z790, but with this board, the fact that it is a godlike, there's not really much that Z790 is actually going to kind of really give us above and beyond what this board has got. This board actually has a lot more features than most Z790 boards out there. Okay, so our drives are in, the processor is in, next up is the memory. So we've gone with G-Skill with a Trident Z5 RGB. This is a 32 gig kit. We could have maybe gone higher with the capacity to make this the ultimate kind of PC, but this is more kind of the ultimate gaming PC. So 32 gig is gonna be more than enough and I'd rather get that balance of having a decent capacity as well as the speed as opposed to just going for all out kind of speed and low capacity or kind of all out capacity. So yeah, this is perfectly fine. It does give us room to, I guess, upgrade at a later date if we wanted. Has got RGB because RGB makes everything better and will look really nice in our system. 
And being the uh, 13900K and Z690 that's running it, we should have no problems getting up to 6800 megahertz in speed. Okay, so our motherboard is basically ready to go. And as I mentioned, I always like to try and build up as much of the motherboard as I physically can because it's so much easier doing it out of the case and that is one heavy motherboard, but it's easier doing it out of the case than trying to sort of put it in the case and then trying to uninstall, you know, removing all these panels to install things and stuff like that. Now, in terms of the case, we are using the Thermaltake Series 500 and we are gonna make some changes to it because this is the case itself, which is very, very nice. It's their newest one on the market. It does come pre-installed with a 140 mil fan in the back and free in the front, but I'm gonna change things ever so slightly because I like everything to match and this motherboard has got a fair amount of RGB on it. So has our graphics card. So I'm gonna go with these, which are the Tough Fan 12 RGBs. We've actually got nine in total. Uh, we are gonna be using, I think this can fit three at the top. We're gonna to do three at the front, um, as well as obviously having our AIO, which is a Tough Liquid uh, 360. Then we're gonna put one in the rear. So as nice as I'm sure these fans are, which uh, are white, which, which actually kind of matches in with the case very nicely, we wanna strip things down on the case as much as we can and then what we want to do is actually remove all of the fans. Now, by stripping down the case as much as we can, which the front panel does come completely off, and then the side panel is actually on a glass hinge door, so we can take that off. We can then look at taking off the other side panel. And again, this is just, I guess, common practice from me. Whenever I'm building a PC, I just like to remove kind of as much as I physically can from a case, just to give me a little bit more room to, to deal with things. Okay, so I stripped down the case kind of as much as I can. You can see that we've got our three 140 mil fans in the front and then one in the rear. We are gonna be removing them. We also took out the hard drive cage because we've got 16 terabytes of NVMe storage, so we don't exactly need it. You will see as well that we have got a vertical GPU mount in here. So we are gonna utilize that along with a riser cable because kind of feel like the 4090, being as special as it is, being a Supreme X, it needs something a little bit, yeah, special to make it really shine. So there are two screws at the front, which then allows a panel to, uh, to come off, which we're gonna remove because we have something a little bit special, which is this. It's the LCD panel kit for this particular case. So it is sold separately but it gives you just something a little bit more special, a little bit of kind of unique customization. This is how it looks. So it's just a matter of putting it on like that and then using the screws that basically uh, came off for the original panel. And then screwing it into place. And then with your tempered glass side panel on here, you're still gonna be able to have full access to the screen. And then on the other side, it's just a matter of fitting one cable. Okay, so I will admit the fans that come included with this do look very, very nice. And I know Thermaltake have made a lot of new fans recently. They've got these ones, the tough fans, the SWA fans, and the beauty of these ones, which I don't believe Thermaltake have actually done in the past, is the, uh, the RGB on it is actually a standard connector I mean, round of applause there for thermal take. And they are also daisy chainable. So you could put uh, one in here and then feed off of onto this one. And then you've got your standard uh, fan connector as well, which is also daisy chainable, which is really nice. And then we're gonna rip them all out and use completely different ones. So we've taken the rear one out. We are gonna be putting in the Tough Fan 12 RGBs and then exactly the same on the front. Okay, so we have put one of the fans in the rear and then three of the tough fans in the front. We are planning to put the AIO in the top with another three of the fans because the Tough Liquid Ultra 360 actually comes with ever so slightly different fans. They're not RGB or anything like that. But what we do need to do is, along with putting them fans onto here, we actually need the appropriate bracket for our motherboard because it makes sense putting that in there now while we have the opportunity and then getting the whole motherboard and everything into the case. So looking in here, we've got lots of relevant cables that we're gonna need, but the main thing that we're gonna need right now is the back plate for Intel and the relevant standoffs. 
So next thing we need to do is get our radiator sorted. So we have got the fans and just looking at the orientation and how we're gonna have them in the case, we want the cables coming out this side. So it's actually fed sort of more towards um, sort of the cable grommet holes and things like that so that we can get them nice and neat and tidy and, uh, and everything inside our case. So with the fans installed, before we actually put that in there, I do wanna get the motherboard in there. But before we do that, we actually have to take off the expansion brackets because we are gonna have our GPU put in vertically. And this case actually allows you to do that. So you can unscrew the screws for the kind of bracket holding everything in. And then there's another three screws there and then another one at the top. So four screws in total, which once removed, allows you to take this whole panel out and then you can turn it the other way and suddenly now everything is vertical, ready for your GPU. So for our motherboard, even though it does incorporate the EATX form factor, the standoffs for it are actually ATX. So it fits in on the pre-installed standoffs that are inside the case. So it does make installation really, really easy. It's just a matter of getting it in like that and then installing it with the nine screws. So really, really easy. And as you can see, there's plenty of room up here now for um, sort of cable routing options, cable management, that kind of thing. Now, depending on where you're gonna put your AIO, for us, we are gonna put it in the top of the case. And depending on the case that you're gonna be using, you might find that between the top of the motherboard and the top of the case, once there's an AIO in there, you're gonna struggle a little bit with kind of various cables. The main one being your EPS connectors or eight pin or four pin or eight plus four or whatever it is. So power supply wise, we're gonna put that in now. This is the Thermaltake Tough Power GF3 1350 watt. Now it is complete overkill for what we need. Admittedly, we have got lots of drives in here, but they don't really use up much power. We have got a 4090, which admittedly is the most power hungry component of this build. And then we've got a 13900K, which isn't exactly you know, known for its efficiency, regardless of having E cores or efficiency cores. But the fact that this is actually quite a small unit for the size of, or you know, capacity 1350 watt is pretty decent. So we're gonna go with that. And the fact of this is an 80 plus gold unit and it has uh, the PCI Express 5.0 connector that we're gonna need as well. So just makes cable management a little bit easier. So this is the cable itself. It's got the little 12 VH PWR connectors or 12 plus four pins, and it goes directly and natively into our power supply. We are also going to need our 24 pin, of which I have realized after installing an EATX motherboard in there, though this case does say it does accept it, it does block off the cable routing holes. So I'm gonna have to be a little bit inventive in how I get this in, whether it's potentially somehow spreading it and flattening it out behind the motherboard and coming through or using one of the kind of cable grommets at the front that I've already used for the USB 3.0 and Type-C header. So 24 pin, we've got our graphics card one. We aren't gonna need any PCI Express. We aren't going to need, we are gonna need some SATA for the hub for the RGB on the fans. So we will get one of them cables out as well. We don't need any more. Don't need Molex, I don't believe although the hub might actually be Molex. So we get one of them out just in case. And then we have our two EPS eight pin cable connectors as well, which are gonna be the first ones that we're gonna put in just so then it allows us to be able to put in our AIO after we've installed them. Now, depending on the case that you're gonna be building in will depend on how the power supply actually goes in. Sometimes it comes in from the other side. So you take off the side panel and then you'd be able to slide the power supply in and then screw it down. Other cases, like this one, it actually screws in from the back, but it does have a bracket that holds everything into place. So there's four screws. Once you've taken them out, you can then take the bracket and install it onto your power supply, and then it will hold everything in place, and then it's just a matter of sliding it in. So you can then feed your cables through, slide the power supply in, making sure that the fan is facing down on this particular case, like so and then screw everything back into place. We can then get our four plus four pin, which are always a tricky one to kind of hold together and put in at the same time. But once it's in, it's like that. Then we can get 
our other eight pin. Obviously you don't have to install both. It's only really for extra stability when pushing your hardware and overclocking, which we may end up doing with the system at a later date, but at least it's in. Now with our 24 pin, we have had to be a little bit inventive because there are grommets behind this part of the motherboard, but because we are using E80X, it's actually blocked it. I am gonna put the onus on that to thermal tape because this does support E80X, so I don't understand why there wasn't grommets sort of down here, but we have got a solution which we can just take and put our 24 pin, which does sit parallel to the board in here. Now for our AIO, we might as well just feed the cables through first as we kind of pull it through and bring the AIO up into place. Now, we had choices of if we wanted to mount it this way or the other way, or we could have actually put it into the front of the case. I decided to go with this way, and then it's just a matter of holding it into place as you screw it down, and then you can look to screw the rest of them in. We can then put some thermal paste onto our CPU, just a pea size, though other methods are available. Then get our CPU block, put it into place like so, and then screw it down in a diagonal fashion. So last thing, let's talk about the graphics card, RTX 4090. Now I said at the beginning, this build is kind of no holds barred, no budget, no nothing. Hence why we got 16 terabytes worth of storage, an i9 13900K and an RTX 4090. If you're gonna go big, you might as well go big. Now, this graphics card, for anyone who hasn't seen any content or even seen one of these in person, the Supreme X looks absolutely amazing. It is one of my favorite ranges of graphics cards that's been introduced over the last couple of years. I actually use a Supreme X 3090 in my system at home, though I am very, very tempted to upgrade. Now, because it does look so nice, we want it to be front and center. And because this case does have the ability to vertically mount the GPU, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we're gonna use a riser cable. This is one from Thermaltake, which is one of their kind of premium riser cables. And it is just a matter of um, putting it in and screwing it down. Now they do have right angled ones as well as sort of your normal flat ones. But for the case of what we're actually doing here, we are gonna be using a right angled one. Just, yeah, makes life a little bit easier with how we're gonna do things. Obviously the sort of more flat riser cables are the ones if you're potentially looking at maybe angling a graphics card or something like that, which I have seen a lot of modders do over time. They actually have their graphics card kind of sitting in at an angle. So don't worry about this because once we put the graphics card in, it will sort of push this out of the way, but we can now look at getting the card in. Okay, so I'm gonna let you into a little movie secret. Come closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer, right. Not everything goes right. And this was a prime example of it. Because of the graphics card we're using being so thick and the riser cable being kind of obscenely long for what we needed, we did actually search around and try and find other riser cables that were shorter. We did have some, but they were kind of offset a little bit differently. So we settled on going with what we've got. Hence why it's all a little bit bunched up up here, but it is functional. The big question is, does it turn on? Because yeah, it wasn't the greatest setup with that, but if you are gonna be building in this case, obviously it's one of them things where it can't fit absolutely everything. It's not just the fault of this case, it's gonna be any case is going to be like that if you've got a graphics card that takes up three slots or a riser cable that's too long or a combination of the two, which is exactly what we had kind of going on here today. So let's get all the panels on and then see if it actually turns on. So moment of truth time, if we plug that in, Turn this on, we should get a noise from the motherboard. So for anyone who doesn't know, the Z690 Godlike does make a kind of dragon noise. It's pretty cute, pretty cool, but there it is. Right, let's turn this on and hopefully, as standard, everything should light up RGB. And it does. So yeah, this whole build, I guess, is geared around airflow as well so we will be looking at kind of temperatures and how it keeps things at bay especially with the fact that we have got seven fans in there and these i mean i can feel the air that's pushing out on these as well and you've got to admit the rgb does look pretty cool indeed so what we're going to do is get this in the other room get it tested in a couple of games see exactly how it performs along with the performance of kind of cooling on the gpu the cpu and just overall how good the system is so yeah we'll be back very very soon 
So jumping straight into some games and aiming to get the very best performance. So starting with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 on maximum settings at 4K with DLSS enabled. And the system didn't even break a sweat, hovering around 176 FPS overall, with some moments even getting as high as 202 frames per second. I mean, that's pretty insane, I've got to say, especially for one of the latest and hottest titles on the market. During the run, the CPU temperature peaked around 68 degrees, while the GPU stayed at a cool and calm 58 degrees Celsius throughout. Moving on to Cyberpunk, a game that's known to bring even a modest system to its knees. And again at 4K on max settings with DLSS enabled, we managed to maintain a pretty impressive 85 FPS in the averages, while also seeing peak moments where the FPS jumped up to 123. For a game as visually stunning as this, those are some pretty crazy numbers, and it doesn't just stop there. During Cyberpunk, our CPU did go a little higher than what I'd hoped at 94 degrees, though with a game as intensive as this, it's not completely unexpected. Our GPU, on the other hand, stayed at a very respectable 64 degrees throughout our run. During a good old trusty run of F122, no one's going to be disappointed at 224 frames per second overall, and a max performance of 236 FPS. Again, all at 4K on maximum settings with DLSS enabled, and we're seeing numbers like this in such a fast-paced game with incredible detail throughout. In terms of the temperatures, our CPU peaked at 70 degrees Celsius, while our GPU came in slightly lower at 62 degrees C. Lastly, booting up Spider-Man Remastered, and you guessed it, at 4K on maximum settings with DLSS enabled, and we see peak performance of 214 FPS and an average of 173. For anyone who's not played this game, the graphics quality and level of detail from distance all the way up to right up close is simply stunning, and with performance levels like that, it feels simply amazing to play. Again, looking at temperatures, everything was under control with our CPU peaking at 71 degrees, while our GPU remained under 63 degrees during gaming. So there we have it. What a machine. I mean, we went about this whole challenge of, you know, building a PC and making it pretty extreme, RTX 4090, and you can see straight away in the gaming performance, even with DLSS on, because we wanted to give it, I guess, a helping hand to get the most performance we physically could out of it, but we managed to get something that was just completely well, frankly, bonkers. Obviously, in some of the games, you do have the ability of utilizing DLSS 3 if you wanted to go down that route, but we get it, not everyone's going to either want to utilize DLSS as a, a general rule of thumb, let alone DLSS 3, but in my opinion, you'd be stupid not to because the gains that you get through frame generation are absolutely crazy. Maybe we'll do some more tests with DLSS 3 in the near future, so let us know in the comments section if you want to see that. Now, in terms of the design, I get it, it's not going to be for everyone. It is full on RGB, but I really, really do love the fans that Thermal Take have actually brought out. And they're just doing something a little bit different compared to, I guess, your bog standard fan blades that light up. Instead, the fan blades are completely solid, completely black. And instead we have like this RGB frame, which is really nice because it does shine through the edge and still has an industrious look, which I guess is sort of the route that Thermal Take wanted to go down. But let's talk about the case. I mean, this is, you know, the real kind of showstopper. It's got this really kind of quirky screen that you can get for it, which at the moment is displaying our liquid temperature, which I will admit is actually showing a slightly different reading to the one on the pump. But that all comes down to configuration. We then have the godlike as well with, uh, you know, a completely different temperature on there. But let's not get into, you know, the nitty gritty of that. The case itself is amazing in terms of design, style, and just the general airflow. I mean, I can physically feel air coming through the back of this. So they really have done a good job, you know, being able to put this many fans in there and really incorporating cool temperatures while also utilizing some of the latest and greatest components on the market. So there we have it. What do you think about this build in general? What do you think about the case? Would you change any of the components? I mean, you can't really go much higher end. We've got the Godlike, we've got the 4090. Is there really anything else you could do to really make this even more extreme? I guess you could add in more memory if you really wanted to, but I think we've chose the components pretty well. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you enjoyed the build as a whole. And uh, if you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. If you love what we do, then consider supporting us over on Patreon where you'll get access to a whole host of goodies, including behind the scenes content, exclusive game nights, live Q&A monthly uh, videos as well, and much, much more. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys, bye-bye. Did I mention the motherboard has a dragon noise when you first boot it up? I mean, that's just crazy.